Hi everyone, I'm Chuck McLennan for Buick Know How. This month we're going to feature anti-lock brakes. We'll discuss several ABS concerns that affect the Delco Bosch 5 system on the 96 Park Avenue and Le Sabre, the Tevis 4 system on the 95 and 96 Riviera, and the Bosch system on the 91 to 96 Roadmaster. Delco 6 ABS concerns for the Skylark, Century, and Regal are covered in the reference manual. If you need more detail on the Delco 6 system, take a look at know-how number 192, ABS Update, ABS 6. We'll start with a brief look at the new Delco 5 ABS system on the 96 Park Avenue and Le Sabre. Delco's Electronic Brake Control Module, or EBCM, is available in three configurations. Cars with just ABS use a code A module. Cars with ABS and Magnesteer use a code B module. The Magnesteer Electronics is housed within the EBCM. Cars with anti-lock brakes, traction control, and Magnesteer use a code C EBTCM. These systems evolved from a separate EBCM and pressure modulator valve assembly to a single unit that's half Delco Electronics and half Bosch hydraulics. Delco's EBCM is bolted to Bosch's brake pressure modulator valve, or BPMV, and the entire assembly is mounted in a bracket that's attached to the left front lower frame rail. If you need to replace the BPMV or the EBCM, remove the four corner screws and this bolt. Separate the two components by pulling the EBCM straight back to disengage the internal electrical connections. Once apart, try to avoid touching the inside of the BPMV. The internal printed flex circuit and connections are not hardwired and are susceptible to damage. I should also point out that the hydraulic solenoids are not individually replaceable. In other words, should one solenoid fail, replace the BPMV. Before reassembling the EBCM to the BPMV, inspect the RTV seal. If the seal is torn or damaged, Apply new RTV sealant to establish a new weather-tight seal. Then, line up the electrical connections and seat the unit. Finish by torquing the corner attaching screws to 4.5 newton meters or 40 pound inches. Torque the larger bolt to 14 newton meters or 10 pounds feet. Now let's talk about how the system initializes. After the driver starts the engine, without pressing on the brake pedal, the pump operates for a half a second and all solenoids cycle once. The driver may notice a slight buzzing noise or feel a vibration. This is normal. If the brake pedal is pressed and the engine is started, the initialization sequence is delayed until the brake is released or until the vehicle reaches approximately six miles per hour in drive or reverse. Use the Tech One to diagnose ABS concerns. The system sets and stores current and history codes to help in your diagnostics. Current codes show present conditions, while history codes are useful in tracking intermittents. Of course, the Tech 2 will be used for 1997 and future models. The system has additional data known as Enhanced Diagnostics. This area is accessible from the DTC History menu. Enhanced Diagnostics tells how often a code sets and in what order the code set. This can be very helpful if you're diagnosing intermittents. Remember to write the codes on paper before you clear them. The clear codes command in the Tech 1 does just that and leaves you without a clue. After you repair the car, use the automatic test mode to see if codes will set again. Some tests require you to drive the car so wheel speed information can be used to either reset a code or confirm your repair. 
Occasionally you may see a no communication screen on the Tech 1. At the start of 96 production, a few EBTCMs with bad crystals were installed in cars, which led to intermittent problems. This electrical concern can also be temperature sensitive. To diagnose the no communications problem, remove the EBTCM connector. and install the pinout box adapter to the EBTCM. The harness. And the pinout box. Position the pinout box template and use a voltmeter to check for power at terminals A, D, and E with the key on. If you get battery voltage at these three terminals, everything up to the module is okay. Replace the EBTCM. DTC42 can mean that the BPMV pump motor ground is loose. Verify this by checking the nut on the pump motor ground stud. If it's not tight, the ring terminal is loose, causing a poor ground condition. If it is tight, always do a voltage drop test as outlined in KnowHow 188. If that's okay, make sure the wire running from the top side of the BPMV motor is not cut. Don't forget to check this connector. It must be connected. Repair the open in the circuit if needed. DTC42 checks the motor for high resistance and for opens. If the ground is okay, use the service manual for complete pump motor tests. This segment covers problems that you might encounter with BPMV solenoids. If you get an ABS indicator, and any code between 61 and 74, you need to test the resistance of the affected solenoid in the BPMV. In this case, a DTC-64. Begin by removing the EBTCM. Install a pinout box harness to the BPMV. Pin 7 is common to all solenoids, so install one ohmmeter lead at terminal 7. DTC-64 is a release solenoid. Insert the other lead in pin 6. You should get 4 to 7 ohms. If the affected solenoid is out of specification, replace the BPMV. Individual solenoids are not replaceable. If the affected solenoid is within specification, run the Tech 1 automated modulator test. If DTC64 resets, replace the EBTCM and clear all codes. Let's look into the Tevis 4 system on the 95 and 96 Rivieras. The Tevis 4 system on the 95 and 96 Riviera is unchanged. While the Tevis 4 system was used on the Park Avenue and LeSabre, our focus today remains on diagnostic tips for the Riviera and how to handle various DTCs and their accompanying symptoms. See Buick Know How 156 and 170 171 for Tevis information relating to the Park Avenue and LeSabre.